So let's look at the countries and that top the list in terms of energy consumption. China, 1.3 billion people, 115 quads. The U.S., at a quarter of that size, 315 million people, 95 quads. Those are the top two. The U.S. staying at about that level, even as each year we make more things and have more people. China growing because its standard of living, its gross domestic product is growing dramatically every year. The next countries on the list are all in the 20 to 30 quad range. Russia tops that list, and they have 143 million people. Next in line is India. India is the second largest country in the world and probably will soon outpace China to be the largest country in population. Already one and a quarter billion people. But their energy use is a mere 25 and a half quads in 2012. If they already had the same standard of living as China, that number should be four times as much. To get to the standard of living of the United States, or at least the energy intensity and use in the United States, the number would need to be 16 times as much. These are where the growth of energy in the world will come. Just like the graph that shows China's energy growth over time, India's growth is also remarkable. And then for our country number five, we have Japan. Japan has 127 million people, and like the U.S., has been approximately the same in terms of energy use because they, too, improve their efficiency over time. So after these three countries, with India on a very fast growth pace, we come to the next group of countries in the top 10 that are all more or less in the range of the 10 quads per year. Brazil is there with 16. It's also growing quickly. There's 200 million people in Brazil. Shortly after that is Canada, 35 million people, 13.6 quads around the tenth the size of the U.S., maybe a little bit more than a tenth of the energy, because, of course, it's very similar to the U.S., just a little bit colder. After Canada, we have Germany at 13.2 quads with 80 million people, South Korea with 11.1 .1 quads at 50 million people, and finally France at 10 quads with 66 million. The U.K. and some of the other European countries would be close behind giving you these numbers because I want you to understand where the future of energy sources will be. And the one thing you can tell when you see the growth of China, you see the growth of India, and while you see efficiencies and savings in some of these other countries, they will not equal that type of growth. And then to recognize that we don't even see African countries uh, make these statistics yet. yet there are teamings, hundreds of millions of people there as well. For the world to get up to the standards of living that the Europeans and the Americans and many of the Asians enjoy, the world needs a lot more energy sources. So what are those energy sources? I want everybody, before you look at these next numbers, to think. And I'm going to give you the U.S. statistics. The world statistics are really not that much different. What percentage of our energy is made by solar power? What percentage is made by wind power? When I ask this question of students in America who have not really studied this by any means, there's so much hype and so much promise and so much talk about energy from the sun and solar power. People always write down 5, 10, 15 percent of our energy comes from solar. Man, I wish we'd get to that point at some point. I do research in solar energy, and I think the world of it. But the reality is that we actually only get three-tenths of one percent of our energy from solar power right now. That number has gone up, and I'd love to see it go up a factor of ten. That's three percent. What about wind? Today, in the United States, wind makes 1.6 quads since we use roughly 100 quads a year, in 2013 it's 97.2, that 1.6 roughly 
translates to about 1.6% of the U.S. energy comes from wind power. That number has gone up a factor of 10 over the last maybe 10, 15 years, which is great, but it's not rising at the same rate. We have wind turbines in the windiest spots right now, and to be able to connect them to the grid is still taking major investment. So if it's not solar and wind, and you might say, well, what about all the other renewables? Well, it's true, we can grow fuel, our biofuels, ethanol, makes up uh, two quads of the 97. We can take our waste products, like the wood pulp and the sawdust, the branches, all the stuff left over from the paper products industry, and burn it. That's another two quads. That's renewable. Uh, we can tap into incinerators, right? We can incinerate our waste. That's another half a quad. Hydroelectric power, 2.6 quads. Can we expand that? Well, not really in the United States. Most of our places are dammed up. And finally, you could tap into hot rocks beneath the ground, geothermal resources. There's one power plant in the United States, a major power plant complex called the Geysers in Northern California. And they indeed contribute a whole 0.2 quads to our energy mix. So you take all of these renewable sources, and that adds up to about 9.3 quads in the U.S., a little under 10%, which is great. But that doesn't power the country. Nuclear power is a very good source. We use that for electricity. That's another 8.3 quads, another 8 or 9%. So what about the other 80 plus percent? That, folks, is fossil fuels. CO2 producing fossil fuels. And as hard as we may want to say, oh, using fossil fuels is bad, it makes global warming, and it does. And it, it is a disadvantage. But I cannot picture a planet and a world and a country where we suddenly use only one-fifth of the energy we're using now. We could get there over time through research, through engineering, through using these things more efficiently, and that is something that we should do, and I'm all for. But when we look at reality today, and what reality is likely to be in 10 years, even 20 years in the future, fossil fuels will be used. Our number one fossil fuel use is oil, 34.6 quads in 2013. Number two is natural gas, 26.8 quads. And number three is coal at 18.1 quads. All told, these are over 80% of our energy resources.